Hey guys, welcome to another fun and easy microcontroller tutorial. So today we're going to be talking about Modbus RTU. So Modbus RTU it stands for Remote Terminal Unit. So basically what it is, is a serial protocol that is based on the master and slave configuration. It's a protocol that was created by Modicon in 1979. It's used in building management systems or BMS as well as Industrial Automation Systems, IAS. You'll also find Modbus used in SCADA systems. So let's take a look at how the protocol works. So you can either have it in RS-232 configuration, which allows for only around 15 meters, and it is only peer-to-peer -peer or point-to-point, -point, which means you can only have one master and one slave in this configuration. This is commonly known as serial communications, to learn more about UART over RS-232, then check out my previous lecture. You can also have it in RS-422 or RS-485. This is a configuration where you have multiple slaves and one single master. And why it's more robust is because you have differential lines where you got your plus and minus of the transmission. And for your receiver, you also have a plus and minus. These are your differential pairs that go through the slaves. And what is nice is that it is a daisy chainable protocol. Let's look at the more popular RS-485 configuration. Now RS-485 can host up to 32 slaves without a repeater. And if you really want to have a lot of slaves, you can have up to 247 slaves with a repeater. With a whopping distance of 1200 meters. You can see why this is really popular with industrial automation. Now in order for this to work, we need to be on the same board rate or bit rate. So all the slaves as well as the master need to have the same bits per second. And this is mainly because the protocol is asynchronous where there's no dedicated clock. So normal speeds can range from 9600 to 19200 and possible speeds range from 300 to over 100,000 plus. Here's a typical application of how it is used. So you have the device master. It can communicate either via Modbus RTU in RS-232 mode or RS-485 mode and then you also have Modbus TCP IP I'll be covering Modbus TCP IP in a future lecture but for now we'll be focusing on RS-485 here's just another application where you have Modbus RTU on one side where you have a number of slaves and your master is connected on this side over here through Ethernet and this is connected through Modbus TCP IP or TCP Let's take a look at how the protocol works. So in RS-485 mode, we start with a start condition. The master sends the start condition to all of the slaves, and your slaves register it. So the start condition consists of 28 bits or 3.5 characters. 3.5 characters, you say? What does that mean? Well, you have 3 characters and a half. I'm just kidding. So each character is 8 bits. If you're sending 3 characters, that's... 8 times 3 which is 24 plus another 4 is 28 and 4 bits equals half a character so therefore you have 3.5 characters so we send our slave address ID we send it to all of the slaves and that is an 8-bit address when the slave with the right ID receives that ID command it lights up and activates then we send our function code which is also 8-bit let's take a look at what the function code is so if I send a 1 it means read coil status. Now if you don't know what coil is, I'll explain later in this video. 2 is read input status. 3 is read holding registers. 4 is read input registers. And then we've got write single coil status. Write single register. Multiple coil write. Multiple register write. And these are just the most commonly used function codes. Then we go and send out data. Now we can send n time 8 bit data. And it all depends on what the slave supports. You can find this out in the datasheet of the slave. Next, we send a 16-bit CRC error checking code to our slave. Now, if you want to learn more about CRC, please like this video and I'll be sure to make a video on CRC. Then finally, we send a 28-bit stop condition. Now, the 28-bit is similar to our start condition or three and a half characters. Once we send our Modbus message, the slave responds with an echo in response to our commands. Now it doesn't always send an echo. 
if we requested data, then it'll send the requested data that we wanted back to the mask. So it'll send back the data that we requested. So for example, if you requested temperature, it'll send back the temperature reading. This is what it looks like overall. Start, which is a three and a half characters. It sends our address, our function, data, as well as our CRC. And that consists of one frame. This is our one frame. And then we start off our end bit. And then we continue to the next message and the next. This is what the full protocol looks like. Now, as promised, let me tell you about the data types and address space. So coils is a one bit word. You can access it and read and write it. And it's located in the address space of one to 9999. Your discrete input is also one bit, but it's a read only. And it's located within this address space. Your input register is a read only and it's 16 bits with this location space. Your holding registers is read and write, which means it's 16 bits. Now, what if you want to have a 32 bit word? What do you do then? You can just take two 16 bit holding registers and send them together. Your slave or master on the other side will decode that into a 32 bit word. Simple, right? Okay, so if you want to implement your own Arduino Modbus configuration, you can check out the link below. You can even link it to a Raspberry Pi if you wanted to. And with that said, thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.